What's up, lightsabers? What's up, my people out there? And yes, anybody who is in my tribe, who's a part of my tribe, is proclaimed a lightsaber as well. I am Tony Purnell, the light worker. Um, my mission is to shine a light wherever I go. Um, I am a, a licensed clinician. I have my own practice called Enlightened Therapy Services. I am the director of um, Christian Counseling, director of mental health counseling at uh, Promises Church. Yeah. Um, one of the ministers there. And Let me just say that that Tony is available. He is booked and busy, but he's also available for sessions and stuff like that. He got good rates, y'all, so make sure you hit him up. If you send an email to info at promiseschurch.org, we'll also direct you right to him if you need therapy sessions. Um, I mean, that's individual, marriage, couples, whatever it is that you need, he's available for all of that. So please make sure you reach out. So no. You yes. may be dealing with somebody who is a narcissist. You may be a narcissist. You might be one. That, tell them. <laughs> I want to rock the boat. Ooh, but this is this it. Is, no, we, this, this is the is... discussion. This is it right here. You may very well be a narcissist. You're going to know today Lord after today's mercy. combo. You're going to know if it's you. <laughs> I'm just saying. Make sure you reach out. So we're going to dig in because we got some folks watching now. So we want to make sure we hit the topic. Um, the first question is what in this topic for today, but let's literally go through what is a narcissist. So I'm going to just give you what I have, mm -hmm. what I found through my research, and then I'm going to let Tony go in. Basically, a, a, a narcissist in the plainest sense is someone that suffers from narcissistic personality disorder or uh, NPD. Uh, it's a mental mm -hmm. disorder characterized by a lifelong pattern of exaggerated feelings of self-importance, importance, an excessive need for admiration, and a diminished ability to empathize with the feelings of others. Um, narcissists are not bad. They are made. Created and nurtured. Preach. Let, let's just start there. So when people say, oh my God, I was born this way. No, 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 no. Let's be very clear. Narcissists are made. They are created. And so we, when we talk about this idea and this notion of nature versus nurture, that whole nurture theme manifests itself. Absolutely. So when you look at the parenting style of a person who has made a narcissist, it's a combination of overindulgence and underindulgence Absolutely. when you're creating that type of individual. Mm. And so you, you, you have the parents that are always at the soccer games and you're taking pictures and they're cheering their child on, overindulging, make sure their mm -hmm. grades is on point and they're rewarding them for the good grades and everything is a picture perfect moment. That's the overindulgence moment I'm talking about. And then yeah. the underindulgence moment. Okay, my mom, I'm gonna tell you how I feel. And they're disconnected. Yes, the that's child. the two types. Like you said, overindulgence, underindulgence. And another name for the overindulgent uh, narcissist is a grandiose uh, narcissist. And, and they uh -huh. suffer from grandiose narcissism. Uh, they're basically were treated uh, as if they, like Tony said, as if they were superior throughout their entire childhood. These expectations yes. end up following them when they become adults and they tend to brag and be elitist, right? Uh, those with grandiose narcissism are aggressive and dominant. Yes. They exaggerate their importance and they are very self-confident and aren't sensitive to other people. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, but when you, when you look at a narcissist, people, and you're talking about the classic hallmarks of a narcissist, Pastor T. You're talking about the yep. grandiose nature. You're talking yes. about the lack of empathy, thinking yes. the world revolves around them. They're really entitled. You know, they expect special treatment to be given to them and them only. Preach. Preach. And so it, it, when you talk, those are the classic hallmark symptoms of a, a narcissist, but it's for them and nobody else. Why do you get the special treatment? Why? why that's the big question they think they deserve it that's the mm -hmm. the, the answer to, to that question is people who suffer from grandiose narcissism you know they feel like they are superior they were raised yeah. to believe mm -hmm. that they are and mm -hmm. they deserve more and better than everybody else let me say this and they and they harbor these huge fantasies that it's about status they want to be around people who have status and you know uh, how they Elitist. look. Yes. They want to. They want to be make people be around people who make them look good as well. Mm -hmm. 
And, and so vulnerable narcissism is, is a behavior that is usually the result of childhood neglect or abuse. And so we talk about it a lot in therapy sessions, but you know, a lot of people have faced some kind of neglect in their childhood. Yes. People with this behavior are much more sensitive. Narcissistic behavior helps to protect them against feeling uh, inadequate, right? Exactly. Even though they go between feeling inferior and superior to others, they feel offended or anxious when others don't yeah. treat them as if they're special. So yeah. these people actually don't feel that they're special and mm -hmm. they bounce back and forth, but they put on a front like they should be treated special. Amen. Uh, and I'm preaching because that's, that's, that's the amen come in when I feel like I'm going to preach. Come on. But these people feel like you know, they should be yeah. treated special to cope with the fact that they don't feel like they're special on an everyday basis. So narcissism really has nothing to do with me. If I'm dating a narcissist, it has nothing to do with me. It's really everything to do with them and Absolutely. their own insecurities, Oof. right? The insecurity, narcissism is a trait that reflects solely on insecurity. Yeah, And that's the vulnerable aspect that Pastor T was talking about. People who are so insecure that they count on the world for validation. Yes. That's what she was talking about. Oof. That's why social media is so paramount to a person who has narcissistic personality disorder. I feel like you were by yourself. I really just wanted y'all to know, look, I've been missing in action. People were like, she's been silent for a few months. I was wow. dating a narcissist and it almost took me out of here. So I thank God for wow. those that were praying for me, not knowing what I was going through, but knew I was missing. For those that just was praying, period. For those that just wished me well in life, it don't have to be a prayer. Yeah. You just wanted me to be better off. Listen, I was dealing for almost three months with a narcissist and it took almost took me out. Almost took me out. So I have to be very honest with you guys. This is not just the topic we're covering because it's a cute one. Uh, this is personal for me. This was, it was life or death, matter of life or death almost. It, it, it can be that extreme. And, and narcissism, when I speak to other people, when I counsel them, I've noticed narcissism in two very strong forms. One, somebody is dating a narcissist. Mm -hmm. Or two, I see it where they, 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 they've been parented by a narcissist. That's yes. very prevalent too. That's heavy. My personal experience prior to now, I've never dated a narcissist. My parents aren't narcissists, yeah, but yeah. I did work with or work for or work under a bunch of them, you know, and yeah, so and yeah. they can afford to be that way. Here's the other yep. thing. Narcissists can move through life and be very successful individuals. And you might not mm -hmm. even notice that they're narcissistic until you have personal interactions with wow. them. Let me be clear because they're Woo, good at putting on fronts. On. Come on down the alley. And, and only people who get close. I write something, and this is for, for the dating part, but I'll throw it out there now. I read something that said the people who feel the, the worst of it, that get the brunt of, of the worst of a narcissist are the people that they are closest to. Because Even in my own practice, I've, I've treated a couple narcissists. One, it's very hard to treat. I've treated Preach. a couple hard, couple hard I'm, tell, I'm telling you. Because one, it, it requires accountability. And yes. it, it's hard to treat because a narcissist, and, and the, the traits that Pastor T is talking about, a narcissist is not going to take accountability for their actions. They'll do this thing, which is almost, I'll say, an underlining trait or quality. We talk about this thing called being jealous. Another thing we hear about hard these days is gaslighting, right? Yes. They deny your reality. They deny the reality that you're living. Oh, make you think well, you're you crazy this, and you're not. Make you think you're crazy. When you said this to me the other day, you know, I felt, I felt really sad about that. And they make you say, they make a statement like, well, you don't have the right to feel that way. Mm -hmm. you, you don't have the right to feel that way. Ooh. Or I didn't say that. Well, I don't know. I, I've never said that. It's, this it's is like, good. then you question who you are. Yeah. This could be a relative. This could be a boss. This could be you. <laughs> this, this might be you. It and, might and, be and you. you if hear. you're a narcissist, it's you. okay. And, and while you can't necessarily be cured, you can learn to cope with it. And you can exactly. learn some skills that will make you a little less narcissistic in your interactions with other people. Boom. Here's some yeah. things to look for. Sense of entitlement. And Tony, feel free to go in on these. Like if you want to expound or explain. A narcissist feels a sense of entitlement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like somebody I, owes them something. Like the yeah. world owes them something. Everybody they encounter owes them something. It belongs to them and mm -hmm. they're going to get it because of who they are. They think yeah. they're special. Superior, I'm special. I'm about. unique. It, it belongs to me. It's Ooh. my birthright. And, it, and and I say things like that all the time. It's my birthright. 
I'm winning in life because I'm designed to win. But yes. they take this to the next level. <laughs> I'm talking about when I when I take when I talk about it and how me and Pastor T talk about it, it's our birthright to win in life. We talk about favor. Okay. Yes. Woo, I'm not if you talk about favor. Not this nobody not about us favor. Nothing. Exactly. This is not about favor. This is feel Whoa. like because they feel like that's just they deserve it. And that's just because who they are. Yes. They're supposed yes. to have it. You'd be like, like not no. so. I mean, and they do this on a regular, like it's with whatever. They they're the type of person that they go to a place they feel like they're supposed to cut the line. They might mm -hmm. be a nobody, and not by nobody, I don't mean actually a nobody, but I mean like nobody might not even know who they are, but they who feel are like they're supposed to. And, and they'll get upset get up and they'll leave. Yeah, and they're the type that say, I had a horrible experience here. They had a bad experience. They just told you to wait in line with everybody else. But you, because you think you big, you thought you were supposed mm -hmm. to skip the line. Narcissist. Exactly. Uh, it, it extends beyond cultural lines and ethnic lines and race and gender and, you know, uh, disabilities and all types of other things, yeah. age and all of that, class, all of that. Narcissists are found in every category you can think of. But there are some backgrounds that are a little more prone to narcissism because culturally it's been acceptable for so long. So I won't do too exactly. much that, Woo. but I'm going to just... or manipulative or controlling behavior that's mm -hmm. a trait of a narcissist Manip as, as in the situation is not really like this but i'm gonna turn it into this or i'm gonna make you think it's like this and manipulate mm -hmm. it so that i can get what i desire or controlling which means i'm going a step above and beyond exactly. i actually want to make the outcome what i want it to be and i'm gonna do whatever i gotta do or say what i need to say to get what i want out of that's it. the thing i was talking about this whole gaslighting thing that's a manipulative tactic and even more so, the whole controlling, if I'm in a relationship with you, Taylor, and I give you the silent treatment, that's a control tactic. Thanks. I need to have the Woo! cards on my end. If I'm not going to talk to you, you're going to feel it. And I want to I want to I want to let you know you're going to feel it. You want to fold. Another thing about that's control. The they want and you to fold. They yes. want you to fold. Woo! They want you to give in. And so you talk about this. Gaslighting, you talk about the idea of control, that control has to be on their side. The cards have to be in their pile at all times. At Always. all times. Mm. What? No, this was my life, okay? I was dealing with somebody, and the silent treatment was a big t tactic and tool that, they, that this individual used on a very consistent basis. If I said anything, I was told to shut up, and my job was not to speak. Because they didn't want to hear what I had to say. And then it, if I, I didn't fold then or if I didn't just let that go, then it was, I won't talk to you for three days. But, uh, uh, what do you call it? Isolate you from uh -huh. your friendships. They want Isolation to be the is only another control controlling tactic. factor in your life. That's exactly what it is. That, that's another control tactic. Woo. And so it almost it's almost to the point where I got to break you down. And so the only person that you see after this breakdown is me. And then you put all your, your energy and concentration into me to build me up. I break you down, but I'm still needing you to build me up. Yes. How, how does that work? How does that work? I need you in every aspect to build me up after I broke your ass down. Oh, excuse me. I, you I'm know sorry. you're good. I, I'm, Listen, Tony, Tony, I'm, you already know me. I don't care. I was waiting for you to do it before I did. That way I can do it now because you didn't let the, you, you already said it. My, my bad. This is this is promises. Uh, Y'all know we a little different. We're gonna say whatever we need to say. I got she would try to manipulate and isolate me because I was popular on the scene. I didn't meet many people, but a lot of people knew me, and she would lose it and try to isolate me. That's a classic symptom again, once classic. again in relationships. Mm. Isolation control, Jesus. so you look to me for everything that you need. Yes, and you validate I'm the soul me. Soul source, Woo! they be wanting to that, be God out here in these streets, Tony. Yeah, yeah. Uh, th I mean, that's good. Even uh... here, let me give you another trait: need for admiration. You ever heard? So you got the five love languages. This is like the words of affirmation <laughs> on steroids. Number one, it's not just that's I need to be affirmed one, yeah. every now and again. It's like. I need you to tell me who I am at all times. Like, and if you don't say it, I'm going, they, they're very, let me tell you this. The, the first thing I want to in, in, introduce you to is they're not slow people. Narcissists are very intelligent. 
very crafty. They've mm-hmm. lived their yeah. life being that way. Oh, yeah. And because they're crafty, they will use every tool in their toolbox, everything in their arsenal to get what they want out of any situation. They want to be admired. They want you to tell them how dope they are, how great they are, how amazing they are all the time. And, and so when we talk about this admiration. So it's, it's if you're dating somebody and they say, babe, how do you think I did you know, in that speaking engagement? You know, that's normal things to ask your partner. But mm-hmm. they feed off of it. It's they their need life. to live off of it. It's like, I tell me about me. Because there's a difference between sympathy and empathy. And we got to make sure mm-hmm. that you guys have the, the, the correct understanding. Sympathy is I've been through what you've been through and I can understand it. Empathy is I might not have been through it, but I can see that you're hurting. I can exactly. see me and with my social skills and my emotional intelligence. I can tell that something's not right about you and I care. Exactly. They- You know, it's Bell. If I just love him enough, he'll change. If I just care for him enough, I know he'll change. It ain't you. It ain't got nothing no. to do with you, baby. It's them. Oh, he won't be this beast no more. If I just show him he care, I care, I can just love him. It ain't about you. If I just put on this yellow dress, I can be Bell at the ball. No. No matter how much you do. Basically, we, we feel like we can't talk about these things. But you got to come out of that because somebody else's healing is contingent on you being open and honest about what you went through. Don't be ashamed. You didn't do it. You are not to blame. I do this the best, better than anyone else. Tell me about me. Okay, cool. Period. One told me one told me that they they oh they are a boss and they make women. I said, well, where are you making them at? Because Last time I checked, that's something Christ didn't, he did that in heaven. He started that project. Where are you making? You got a factory? Where are you making these women? Ah, come on, women. <laughs> Where you got a conveyor belt? You putting the hard line? How you making? Where are you making? It's a them? conveyor belt. Listen, I just want to know. I'm petty. Y'all know I'm petty. I, I, that the Lord has not delivered me from. I am still petty. And so of women narcissists are attracted to people of importance because they are elitist they want to be with people who are uh-huh. of high stature doesn't mean they are you high make me look good means that they want to be with you because you exactly. are so note here here i want to encu- oh here we go because y'all know i'm preaching i want to bless somebody today if you dealt with the narcissist it's because you are that dope because they only deal with people that are dope because they are elitist. They feel like they can only deal with people that are of a certain stature. So if you dealt with one, know that that, that's a clue to you that your dopeness has shined through because you attracted them. God forgive me, I'm saying, I'm preaching to you on today. It's the truth. You're you're with somebody because you're you're that dope to that person. They they see something certain within you to illuminate themselves. They need you to illuminate them. Makes them feel better, but then they'll make you feel like crap. Like you aren't the person that Mm -hmm. they tell you you're everything and they only date everything, but then they tell you you're nothing. And you're not in the same same breath, they tell you both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fantasy world narcissists live in a fantasy world where they believe like life is like you know, like straight off the TV screen or something, and they try to uphold the look of that. Not the actual thing. They don't want to put no work in. The work work. should be something you do to keep Mm -hmm. them. That's why I said the whole social media aspect. It's about the look. People can have perceptions based off one picture. And they derive whatever image they got. I'm going to paint the picture that I want people to think about me. So I'm going to put this certain image out there for everybody to believe and to think. That's why social media is so big to them. It's this fantasy world. I got in the comments. Not. It says, sis was jealous of my friends and future wife. She would tell me I'm not your type, but in the next breath, she told me I wouldn't be anything without her. That is definitely a classic narcissist. That's a comment from a narcissist. There's another comment that says, there's nothing you can do to please them. I thought I was going crazy. I was, apo- oh my God. I was apologizing for something I did when we were not together. Not I just together. had to cut him off because I could not handle uh, any more of the mind games. You are preaching it is in a mind place. Game. Period. Exactly you find yourself is. apologizing for stuff you should never be apologizing yeah. for. But they make you feel guilty. They know mm-hmm. what to say to make you feel like you didn't do enough. And it's yes. not you. It's them. You begin to question yourself. 
That's why I said the whole gaslighting thing is so paramount to people in these type of relationships. And like Teller said, it doesn't have to involve a romantic relationship. Relationship means who I am in relation to you. It yes. could be your boss. It could be your parent. It could be a sim. It's the relationship, who you are in relation to another person. That they do this is, is really a talent. How they yes. make you feel so less than, how they make you feel so undeserving, so unworthy, because they do it with so such ease. Yes. And it's like, well, damn, how did I even get here? Like, how, you I was not like this before you. Before That's I met the you, question. I was like this person. Because I know, I know, I know I'm not the only one. You wonder, how did I, especially if you, you dope and you kind of know it a little bit, you know, how did Absolutely I get in this situation?